Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For those that have not yet found it, good morning. Welcome to this morning's service. The 21st day of January 2024. Usually January is a month that everyone thinks crawls, you know, and is very slow. But this year, for me, I don't know about you, but January seemed to go very fast. And we're on the 21st day of January. And it's my prayer that even as this January has gone very fast, that the Lord will do speedy things in our lives in the name of Jesus. I want you to turn to the person next to you and tell them how beautiful and handsome they look. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalm 122, verse 1, I was glad, I rejoiced when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you. But I started my commute last week, because this is New Week here. I was dreading it. But I made it. Amen. And I'm standing here. Yeah. I don't know how challenging your week was. But the Bible tells me in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30, that come to me all you who are tired from carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. You are in the place of rest this morning. All I want you to do this morning, even as we worship the Lord, even as we pray, even as we listen to the word of God, just let go and let God. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for today. We thank you because this is the day that you have made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Heavenly Father, King of glory, because before the foundations of the earth, you knew this day will come. Lord, we lift up the service into your hands. Lord, we ask, oh God, that your presence will be made manifest here. We ask that you will visit us, each and every one, individually and collectively, oh God. Even for those that couldn't make it, Lord, in their homes watching right now, at the place of work, in the hospital, wherever they be, oh God. We ask that your presence that is made manifest here will meet them where they are. Lord, we pray that as the praises go up, your glory will come down. Be glorified, be magnified in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, church, let's stand. We're going to worship God together this morning, aren't we? Yes, five of us are. The rest of us are. We're going to worship God together this morning. That's what we're here for, church. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. We're welcoming our Father God. We're welcoming Jesus. We're welcoming everyone in this place this morning. Let's worship our God.
is great in power. He is great in power. Tom. You don't sound as if you've just declared that he is great in wonder. He's great in wonder. We serve a God that is greater above everything. He's greater than your problems. He's greater than the challenges. Whatever it is, we have a God that is great in wonder. That was the first start. 
we will have time to worship. And for those of you that came in a little bit after half 10, if you are just dragging yourself in, do not worry. You're in the place of rest. You will be refreshed. The Bible says, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. In Isaiah 40, 29, he says, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Father, we worship you. We exalt your holy name. Thank you for your presence here once again. In the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. You can take your seats. Sasha. We have a testimony from Sasha. Good morning, church. Thank you, Tom Berry, for this opportunity to share my latest testimony. In July of last year, I lost a very good friend who took her own life. This news broke me and it had an effect on my mental health. I had been talking to her an hour before. I had the phone call to say what she had done. I asked the question in my head, what could I have done to save her? Or, or, or was, was it anything I said triggering the feelings leading to her taking her own life? I was burdened with this for months. And then my nan and granddad took me to the service in December called It's a Blue Christmas. We, we all had to write names of people we lost on a star and hung it up on the Christmas tree and then light a candle in memory of them. I did, I did this and then I sat thinking about it, crying and talking to God and thinking of all the memories we had. Then we made our way home. I felt much lighter on, on the journey home because I realised God had taken the burden from me. I, real, I realised the service had been my saviour, as, as it says in the first part of John 14 verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. Even though my mental health had gone into a spiral that year, God, God had been true to his promise that he would never leave me nor forsake me. I, I want to thank those in our church family for, for your support, prayers and love during this dark time. Also, I want to thank my counsellor, Jo. She's not here this morning, but she truly is amazing. And after eight long months of counselling, I can say that I'm done with counselling now. I don't need any more. Hallelujah! <laughs> Sasha said, during the blue Christmas, God took the burden away. I don't know whatever burden you have, God can take it away. But he will only take it away if you give him that burden. Don't hold on to it. Give it to him. There's nothing too small for our God and there's nothing too big. The Bible says, for the things which seem impossible with men, they are possible with God. Amen. 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 We're going to quickly just take some announcements from Pastor Jim. The first announcement is the AGM on the 11th of February. Only Michelle seemed to be happy with it. <laughs> oh, oh, Naomi. <laughs> and um, please take note that this week is the last week you can 
send your questions to Malcolm, sitting right here in front, Malcolm Wave. And as Pastor Jim has announced over a couple of weeks, do not send him a WhatsApp message with your, with your comments. Please send it to malcolm at cornerstonealim.co.uk or let's go, you can go back to the way it was before technology by writing it and giving it to him. The second announcement is on the 12th of June, we have a chance to host the Watoto Children's Choir. Yay! Come on, be, be happy for that. However, as is the tradition we have here, we always ask for volunteers. If you have a spare room in your home that you can host at least two children and an adult, I will read exactly what Pastor Jim wrote. Separate beds. <laughs> if anyone can, please see one of the staff or the pastors. And finally, from the 31st, Wednesday the 31st of January at 7 p.m., we'll be exploring Isaiah with Pastor Peter Davis. So it'll start another series looking at Isaiah on Wednesdays, starting with the last Wednesday of this month. So please make yourself available to come and study the word of God. We're going to spend some time now just to worship. All I will ask you to do is forget about yourself, forget about the person next to you, Concentrate on him, focus on him, and worship him. Let us stand.
King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I am that I am. He made the move. He made the move. Hail Him. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give Him worship. Give Him praise. Worship Him. Adore His name. Join the 20 and 4 elders. Say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Worthy are you, O God, that was slain to receive glory, to receive honor, to receive adoration. Lord, we cast our crown.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In royal robes, we don't deserve. In royal robes, washed as white as snow, we don't deserve. But we leave, Lord, and we will serve you, our majesty. Can the service come forward, please? You can take your seats. For I received from the Lord what I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, ratified and established in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. As you take the communion today, remember Jesus. Remember the cross. Remember what he did on the cross. In royal robes, we don't deserve. He was beaten for our transgressions. He took our place. He took my place. He took your place. As you take this communion, Activate the power of the resurrection. Activate the power of the cross. The hymn writer says, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss. Remember Jesus. Remember the sacrifice. He says, do this in remembrance of me. He gave us an assurance. He said, this cup, it is ratified and established in his blood. The blood that speaks more gracious things than the blood of Abel. The blood that speaks redemption. The blood that speaks <coughs> upliftment.
You tore the veil. You made a way where there seems to be no way. You took away every barrier. You took away the hindrance. The way you tore the veil that we might come boldly unto the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your presence that has been with us in this service. Lord, we ask, oh God, that even as we've taken the communion, that the power to raise Jesus from the dead will be activated in us, oh God. We ask, oh God, that even as death could not hold him bound in that grave, whatever situation, whatever circumstances will not hold us bound. Because the same power to conquer the grave lives in us. We give you praise, we give you glory in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Thank you very much, worship team. This is the time we go, some of us, we go our separate ways. We've got little fish this way, big fish this way, and the whales will be going over to the cornerstone. So if you're in year seven and above, you're a whale. You'll be going to the cornerstone. Um, primary school five and above, big fish and, no, reception, nursery and primary school. How old are you, darling? Here, yeah, off you there. Just as Pastor Jim said last week, we have a vibrant youth. The next set of people, so I will not be afraid when I'm no longer here, because I believe those set of noisy youths will take over. It's time to hear the word of God. Whatever it is, let us focus, get our minds, open our hearts to hear what God has for us. Pastor Prabhu. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a, what a blessed word uh, God Almighty gave uh, to Pastor Jim uh, in this year from the book of Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, verse uh, 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords, cords and strengthen your pegs. In, uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, uh, why God said to his people, you can enlarge your territory. God can enlarge your, uh, your blessings because in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, we can see the Lord's everlasting love for Israel. The everlasting love of God. Today morning, when we all are sitting here in the presence of God, that everlasting God, He's watching us. He would like to see we are getting blessing, the spiritual and material blessing from heaven. Because our God is everlasting God. We can see the everlasting love in, uh, uh, in him. Today's message is, God can enlarge our territory. 
Do you believe in it? Yeah. If you're believing, just say Amen. Amen. Wonderful. That's good. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, uh, verse 14 says, uh, book of uh, Genesis, just a moment, sorry. Yep. Uh, thank you. Um, book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 14 says, Is anything too hard uh, for the Lord? In another translation, it says, Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Humor is sitting at the moment here. God is asking the same question to you and me. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Whatever the difficulties in our life, God is asking the same question. Is anything too difficult for me? God said this verse uh, to Abraham's family. God called Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12. Abraham, when he heard the voice of God, Abraham responded to God's call. Genesis chapter 12, verses from 1 till 4 says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curse you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. God spoke these verse, verses to Abraham. But these same verses, it is a promise from God to his church. And repeatedly, God is saying to Abraham, I will, I will. So many things is too difficult in our life. But nothing is hard for our God. Praise God. Abraham, when he heard the word of God, he obeyed God. In the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 7, we can see there, Abraham built an altar and began to worship the God Almighty. He heard the voice of God. He didn't. Abraham didn't receive the promises from God. He just heard the voice of God. But Abraham didn't wait to worship the God. Uh, he didn't take this decision. Lord, first you need to give that all promises to me. I need to receive all promises. Then I will worship you. No. When Abraham heard the voice of God, what happened? Abraham, thank you, thank you, and uh, uh, Abraham started to worship God. Whenever we are receiving the promises from God, let us worship God. Let us praise His name together. Praise God. Abraham was traveling at a famine, was in the land he was in. Because of this, he traveled to Egypt. When Abraham faced this famine, he heard the voice of God. After that, he, he faced the famine. We all are hearing the voice of God. But uh, don't think, I, I won't face any troubles or tribulation or any pain. But whatever the things will come in our life, we must believe this one. God he is always with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Abraham faced a terrible time because of Pharaoh. But God spoke to Pharaoh for Abraham. Abraham saw God's 
hand of protection upon his life upon his family in that famine god blessed abraham the bible says in the book of genesis chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 so abraham went up from egypt to negev with his wife and everything he had and lot went with him abraham had became very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold we can see god's protection and provision over abraham's family amy carmichael worked in india as a missionary she said this statement sometimes the enemy comes in like a flood but then is the time to prove our faith whenever issues pressure pain will come into our life that's a time that's a time to prove our faith praise god abraham faced the famine in that land why did god allow the famine in abraham's life god almighty wanted to teach abraham and his family to learn a basic lesson of faith if anyone today morning if you are facing any famine any dryness in your life we must believe this one this is a basic lesson from god god want to see we are growing in our faith just follow triumphs when pharaoh took sarah into his place abraham was like he was in a, a furnace of testing that was a, a, uh, what it called uh, he was going through a difficult situation but abraham faith in god moved into the direction of peace and hope we all need to understand this god alone is in control of all circumstances abraham became the father of faith because he went through many tests but all of the tests were the school of faith in his life james chapter 1 verse 12 says james chapter 1 verse 12 blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the lord has promised to those who love him god extended abraham's territory in the book of genesis chapter 18 we can see the intimacy between god and abraham god and abraham they were great friends when three visitors were in abraham's tent he ministered to them all ministry should be to the lord first we we can see the serving heart of abraham a very wealthy man very strong man but he was ready to serve god genesis chapter 18 verse 2 says abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby when he saw them he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground abraham was so humble only after he had served his guests did abraham stand still that was his heart the heart of a serving god said to abraham i will surely return to you at this time next year and behold 
Sarah, your wife will have a son. When God spoke this promise to them, Abraham and Sarah were old. But, but what God said to them has done. We can see in book of Genesis chapter 21. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah. As he, he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Amen. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son. Sarah bore him. Beyond man's thinking, God extended Abraham's territory. Whatever man is thinking about us, doesn't matter. God wants to extend our territory. Abraham's descendants became a great blessing for the nations. The Lord asked Abraham, is anything too difficult for the Lord? If God asked any question, always we need to believe this. Before he's asking the question to us, God already said so many things for us. Praise God. Famines and spiritual fights in Abraham's life led him into became, becoming a faith hero. Are you facing any famine in your life? Are you facing any struggle in your life? God is going to extend your territory. In Genesis chapter uh, 26, verses 1 till 3 says, Now there was a famine, another famine. Now there was a famine in the land, beside the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while. And I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swear to your father Abraham. Abraham's son Isaac also faced a famine in his life. God just us to bring out the best in us. But Satan, devil tempts us to bring out the worst in us. Many places in the Bible we can see God does his people. But the temptation is not from God, it's from devil. The book of James chapter 1 verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, Amen. nor does he tempt anyone. Temptation is not from God. But God will test his children to grow in their faith. Faith that can't be tested, can't be trusted. I would like to read that statement again. Faith that can't be tested, can't be tested. If we are facing any test, don't worry, God is with us. When Isaac faced this famine, he went to Gerar. When Isaac faced the problem of a famine, God didn't leave him alone. The Lord appeared to him. He said the promise to Isaac. He obeyed the word of God. Isaac obeyed. Isaac listened to the word of God. Isaac obeyed the word of God. Genesis chapter 26 verse 12 says, Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped 
a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. This is a godly blessing. Isaac and his neighbors had access to same soil and they received the same sunlight. But Isaac's harvest was greater than everybody else. It doesn't matter what season we are in. God can bless us. Abraham, Abraham's name is mentioned eight times in this chapter. Isaac's territory of faith enlarged through this famine in the land of Gerar. We can never grow in faith by running from difficulties. Romans chapter 5 verses from 3. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our heart through the Holy Spirit. Who has been given to us. You see... At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is ready to help us to grow in our faith. Genesis chapter 41, verses from 56. When the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to Egyptians. For the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. Because the famine was severe everywhere. Did you see that word? Years after, Jacob and Joseph's time, they also faced famine. This famine reunited Jacob's family. In the book of Genesis chapter 45, verses from 27. But when they told uh, him everything uh, about Joseph, had said to them, and when he saw the cards Joseph's uh, heart sent to carry him back, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, I am convinced my son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. After Joseph showed gracious forgiveness to his brothers in Genesis chapter 45, we can see recognition, reassurance, relocation, revival, reunion in Jacob's family. Jacob's family uh, and jo uh, you know uh, uh, Jacob's uh, uh, family members, they all they faced famine. But that famine, through the, in, in the time of famine, God blessed that family. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, they all faced a famine in their lives. But they were so strong. They were, they, they, they were serving God with, with faithful heart. They completely trusted in the word of God. Now, when we are praying, we are praying like this. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, do you know, they all became the faith heroes because they all faced the issues. All, they all were faced the famine in their life. But do you know, God Almighty helped them to grow strong in their faith. Praise God. 
the difficulties in our life trying to quench us but god almighty is helping us to grow day by day in the new testament in the book of uh, in the book of acts chapter 11 uh, verse 28 book of acts chapter 11 verse 20 verses from 28 yeah one of them named agabus stood up and through the spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire roman world this happened during the region of claudius the disciples as each one was able decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in judea this they did sending their gift to the elders by barnabas and saul the new testament church also faced famine in their time the jewish historian josephus records many people died in judea because of famine the jewish believers in jerusalem had brought the gospel to antioch then they sent barnabas to encourage uh, the new believers in antioch this gentile church the antiochian church became the blessing for their brothers and sisters in judea church used this opportunity to show their generosity the antiochian church sent their practical love through barnabas and paul jerusalem and antioch church became a blessing each other god can extend the territory of love we can see the spiritual and practical teamwork through the servants of god barnabas and paul after this mission they grow in their ministry now the church at antioch there were prophets and teachers barnabas si- uh, simeon called niger lucius of serene manaen and saul while they were worshiping the lord and fasting the holy spirit said set apart for me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them so after they had fasted and prayed they placed their hands on them and set them off these friends they took the gospel to other countries as well dear brothers and sisters when the people they went through the famine a good result came out abraham the faith hero isaac became the faith hero joseph became a great blessing for nations in jacob's family we can uh, see reunion reconnection revival when the new testament church they faced the famine practically that was a great opportunity to show the generosity and love towards others praise god when uh, me and david uh, spoke today morning before the service we were saying lots of news is going around the world wars famine earthquakes the sign of tsunami the gospel of matthew chapter 24 jesus christ clearly said about famine it's a sign for his church before the second coming hebrews chapter 4 verses from 14 says therefore since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven jesus the son of god let us hold firmly to the faith we profess 
for we do not have a high priest who is unable uh, to em uh, empathize uh, with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin let us then approach god's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need jesus christ the savior is always with us he is always with us trust in god he will extend our territory he can enlarge our territory uh, god is asking uh, this uh, question uh, to uh, the church today is anything too hard for the lord is anything too difficult for the lord god can enlarge the territory of our faith god can extend the territory of our hope god can enlarge the territory of our generosity god can enlarge the territory of our church in this 2024 god can do it Amen. is anything too difficult for the lord this is the question to the church is anything too difficult for the lord let us close our eyes please thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah 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 shambhana hatarasi thank you lord hallelujah let us pray with a great faith nothing is impossible for our god is anything too difficult for the lord this time let us pray for our church our brothers and sisters right now few of our brothers and sisters they are really struggling because of this vir uh, viral infections so many of the, they they are face uh, they, they are under pain let us pray together for them let us intercede for them hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you lord someone from the congregation will you please pray uh, according to this word of god our god can extend our territory god can enlarge our territory of hope generosity faith god can enlarge our church god can change our situations let us pray let us pray let us pray trust in god focus into god he can do great things in our life he can do great things for his church god yes yes lord yes that nothing is too difficult for you. Yes, ma'am. Doctors can't do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Physicians can't do it. But we know a man who can. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he can do all things. All things are possible. To them that believe. Amen. We believe your words, Lord. Amen. You, we believe your words. We read in Isaiah 54 where you said the mountains may crumble, mm. but your love, Lord, will never crumble. Your love will never fail. And because of your love, we can go and face tomorrow. For we know who holds tomorrow. We know who holds the future. We know who holds everything this morning. We know that we can go in faith. We can go as strong, as strong people in the God of our salvation. For Lord, you know what is before us. Hallelujah. I know your name, said the Lord. I know you by name, and I will extend your tent because I know you by name. I know who you are. I know who you are, said the Lord. And I will extend.
send your tent. I will take you through the oh, yeah, man, I will prepare a place for you. I will bring you through, said the Lord. Yes, it looks difficult. And you cannot tell your neighbor. You cannot share it with your church members. But God said, I know. And I know your name. And I will deliver you. For I've come down to deliver. I've set my deliverer. I will deliver. Walk before me. Yes. I have set a path for you. Just walk. Walk before me. Because the light is shining. Set the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 The word of God is saying no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Amen. Because we all are blessed. We all are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. His name be glorified. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Praveen. Is there anything that is too hard for the Lord? It was impossible in Abraham's time. It was not possible with his age and the age of Sarah. But God said, is there anything too hard? I don't know what you're going through. Don't give up. You might have been waiting for years. If you read Genesis, from the first time God promised Abraham, it took years before Isaac came. You have to keep trust in God. Beyond man's thinking, Pastor Pravin said, God will extend your tenth. The hope that we have does not disappoint. It does not make a shame. So let us go in that hope. Can I have the worship team? We're going to take up our tithes and our offerings, even as we sing our closing
been faithful. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so good. With every breath, even unto the last breath, I will sing of your goodness. Father, we worship you. We thank you. We adore you. We magnify your holy name. What a wonderful time in your presence this morning. Lord, we thank you for gracing this service with your presence. Lord, we thank you because we know, oh God, even as we step out this week, even as we step out in all that we do, at our places of work, in school, at home, visiting friends, visiting families, Lord, we can say that all our lives you have been faithful. Lord, we can declare that all our lives you have been so good. Lord, we thank you. Because we know, oh God, that you said that your presence will go with us. And you will give us rest. Let your presence go with us this week, oh God. Give us rest this week, oh God. That wherever we go this week, and whatever we do, we will be blessed. That this week, that the Lord will arm us with strength and he will make our way perfect. That this week, in all that we do, with the best gifts of the earth and the fullness thereof and the favor of him that dwelt in that burning bush will rest upon us in all that we do. And let the church say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. I want you to turn to the person next to you and declare, surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Please do not leave. There's tea and coffee there. And get to know someone you've never known before. Have a lovely week.